Hey everybody, I'm Scott Weichel. You're listening to My Kind of Country. Thank you so much for joining us on a Monday night. Great to have you all listening in with us from all over the world tonight on Fish Creek Radio and Ears Radio. My guests tonight have a brand new duet single out that we're going to play for you and some other fantastic things coming up. And we're also going to be talking about the Country for a Cause coming up in Nashville. They are going to be hosting that again this year. It is a pleasure to welcome country music royalty on the show tonight, TG Shepard and Kelly Lang. TG and wow. Kelly, great to have you on the show tonight. How are you? Well, it, wow. Uh, royalty. Uh, we're not used to hearing that <laughs> with our names, but thank you. It's very uh, complimentary of you, Scott. After that introduction, we uh, were feeling pretty mighty, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Always, always good to get a chance to visit with you. I've told you before you, you're one of the best at one of one of the best at what you do, and we're big fans of yours too. Well, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure to have you guys on the show. I look forward every time I get a call that uh, you guys have something coming out and we get to talk about it. I'm excited. So, well, before we get into the new single and uh, your new music, uh, let's talk about the Country for a Cause coming up on uh, Wednesday, June 5th, 6.30 p.m. at 3rd and Lindsley. And you can get your tickets at TicketWeb.com. And T.G. and Kelly, I know you're going to be hosting that again this year and another stellar lineup coming up. Well, actually, it is for Monroe Carroll Jr.'s Hospital here at Vanderbilt. It's a children's hospital that's affiliated with uh, the Ryan Seacrest Studios. And uh, St. Jude's more in the Memphis area, but it's the same concept. And, okay. and uh, they try to make the uh, the families not have any of their bills to, to worry about. So uh, it's, it's just a wonderful cause. We've got a great show lined up for you. And it's you know people like Mo Bandy, Crystal Gale, Lee Greenwood... Uh, John Barry, T. Graham, T. Graham. Wow. It's just, just, a, just a huge bunch of incredible artists. It, there's really rarely a place that you can see that many huge names all in one spot for the, for the amount of the ticket and also to go to a great cause. It's really kind of become the kickoff for uh, CMA Fest, uh, which starts that week. This is kind of like the first major event or concert event uh, before CMA Fest starts, so we this is our fifth or sixth year to host it, Cal. I think fifth year. Yeah, and, I think uh, so. We uh, we've been able to donate a lot of money. Last year we donated what over a hundred thousand, or was it close to it? Oh my goodness, I yeah. I don't remember all of the details, the but it's always so much fun to be involved with. And you know, if you're a fan that's coming to Nashville for the first time, it is it's, it's just a small, intimate venue. It feels like family reunion kind of thing, and, and you hear humongous hit song after hit song after hit song. Um, and we've got some new artists coming in, too. Are you familiar with Chapel Heart? I sure am. I had them on the show when they were first starting out. They are such nice people, and I'm so proud yeah. of what they're doing. That's great. Yeah. They'll, they'll be there with us that night. If there's, I don't have the list exactly right in front of me, but, man, I mean, each year it gets stronger and, and, and better, and we're just really... Really excited and, and uh, watching this thing grow. Scott Sexton does an amazing job of promoting it and, he sure does. and getting all of us wrangled in, and, and it's always for a fun and, and great cause. Oh, that's wonderful. We will be uh, actively supporting that. We've had a lot of the artists on the show already. I just talked to Lacey J. Dalton, and yeah. uh, she is oh, so excited. Yeah, Lacey, yep. We, yep. We're so tickled to have her this year. She's coming in especially for our show. And we're just, uh, gosh, she's one of my favorite artists of all time. We've, we've worked together in the past. And, of course, on my last album, Midnight in Memphis, I recorded a, a remake of her hit, Black Coffee. Yeah. And, I, I, yeah, we're just terrible to have her. So anybody that's coming to Nashville uh, around June 5th, be sure and drop by 3rd and Lindsley. The show, uh, all the VIP tickets sold out in one minute. Oh, man. <laughs> so, but we still have some general admission available, but they're going pretty quick. If you're a Conway Twitty fan, June 5th of 1993 is when he passed. So I'm going to be singing a song honoring Conway. It's been 31 years, this oh June 5th, 93. Um, so I thought it might be nice if any Conway fans are out there that they could come and and remember his music with us that night, too. We like to look back and honor the legends and, and look forward and, and bring the new people into the, the fold, too. 
Fabulous. We have all that information on our Facebook page for My Kind of Country, and we encourage you to get your tickets and go check out this fabulous show. And, uh, yeah, that's great. Uh, I had Joni on the show last year. We did a whole uh, special on Conway, and uh, we played your uh, tribute song to him. And how's, how's, jo- how's Joni doing? I know that they were in the path of the tornadoes that went through in December down there, too. Have you talked to her? As a matter of fact, I'm having lunch with her tomorrow at 11. So I'll, I'll tell her that you asked about her, and I guess she's doing better. She's had a lot of health issues with, you know, different yeah. surgeries and stuff, but she's seemingly on the mend and doing much better. Oh, good. Yeah, give her our best. We think the world of her for sure. Well, I, I called you guys country music royalty because of the fact of what you do to help so many people and and as evidenced by this country for a cause show but you also are a power couple on stage you've you've put out some fabulous music obviously separately but together and you've got a brand new duet single that's uh, right on the heels of uh, you're still the one which is a beautiful song and um, it's called addicted to you and i'd like to have you guys tell me the story of the song and and tell me a little bit i know you're working on a full album too well Addicted to You came about, um, Kelly had written a song for me as a solo uh, on my last album, Midnight in Memphis, and when it comes time to start tracking the new album, uh, which will be out in a couple of months, it's finished, we're in the mixing stages now with that album. When we got to listening for songs for the album, uh, Kelly turned to me and she said, you know, Addicted to You, I know I wrote the song, so don't feel like you've got to put it on the album because I wrote it. <laughs> but it really, it really, I think, would make a great duet. And so I, I agreed with her. I said, I think you're absolutely right. It's probably a better duet than it was uh, a solo for me on my Midnight Memphis album. So we went to the studio and uh, laid the track down and uh, put our vocals on it, and it just it shined. It just it worked because it was... Uh, it was Kelly's idea. You know, another thing, we, we always tease each other. We wish there was a stronger word than love <laughs> that we have for each other. And our kids tease us. They say, oh, my gosh, y'all are connected at the hip. You're addicted to each other. So it really fits our relationship. And um, a sweet compliment we had the other day, somebody said that this song was reminiscent of something Johnny and June would have recorded. It, it's just, it speaks of true love, you know, and, and addiction to each other and and uh, we're we're truly blessed to be able to to work together and live together and sing together and it, it's just um, it depicts our whole relationship we're even starting to do some shows together on the road now and i invite anybody to go to uh, com or kellylang.net and uh, look at our tour schedule and see where we're performing and uh, come see our show and join us on facebook and instagram and twitter our ex now and uh join us on uh, on youtube on our channel so it's it's a lot of fun to be married to somebody who understands what you do for a living and man i <laughs> i'm a very lucky man to be married to kelly lang that's for sure i can echo that and I, I love watching your videos when you do the facebook live videos you can just see how much you guys love each other and have so much fun together and as i've i know i've said this before but i think it's just great that you guys have that bond together of music in addition to having a life together it, it makes you be able to share all aspects of your lives together i think that's wonderful well it has its uh, pluses and minuses for example if kelly is writing a new song and she nudges me at four o'clock in the morning saying hey honey listen to this <laughs> Uh, I mean, I'll be sound asleep and wake up and hear her writing a song. And every time she does that, it winds up being my one of my favorite songs of hers. And she is just, a, I'm very lucky to wake up next to her every day or in the middle of the night when she's writing songs. Well, Kelly, your uh, latest album, uh, Dragonfly, is absolutely beautiful. We've done a feature on that. And uh, as TG mentioned, that's available at kellylang.net. And uh, TG, your latest album, Midnight in Memphis, is available at tgshepherd.com. And uh, you also just uh, had a milestone with uh, Slow Burn, 40th anniversary of the number one song for that. Hard to believe it's been that long. I don't know where the time goes, Scott. I really, truly, I said, you know, I, I walk on stage every day and I sing that song. It's still one of my favorites. And 
I look out into the crowd and I see people in their 20s that weren't born yet when this was a number one song singing those lyrics with me. And it just freaks me out. It's, it's just one of those magical songs that, oh no, it's just one of those songs that, sh- that was written on Monday, recorded on Tuesday, released on Wednesday, and goes number one on Thursday. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was a fast song, but I can't believe it's been 40 years since it was number one. But wow, uh, still one of my favorite songs, produced by Jim Ed Norman, who was producing the Eagles at the time. And so... I've always surrounded myself with people that know more about the music business than I do, and that's any success I've had is based on being able to surround myself with talented people. Amen to that. I can agree with that. Well, TG, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you back even a little further. I, I want, wanted to ask you about this for a while. You know, my buddy H. D. Ainsworth that has his show down in Minden, Louisiana. Yeah. And. Okay. Um, for the longest time, he was looking for a copy of you singing the uh, the old Motown song, I Can't Help Myself. And he called me, this has been a while back, but he called me, he's like, can you help me? And I'm like, well, of course, I have the album sitting right in front of me. And oh. uh, I wanted to ask you about that, that beautiful album. It's on Melody Land, which I believe is a, is a subsidiary of Motown Records. How did you come to be on that label, and how did you choose to, to do that song? Well, I've always loved that song. Even as a kid, I had the album, the original album. And when it come time to do that album, uh, I just thought about that song. And I thought, well, I've always loved the song. I know it's not a country song or a country record, or, but I just felt it was a, a great song. And so, uh, therefore, it wound up on the album. But I'm glad that you found that for him. That's that's still one of my favorite songs that I've ever recorded, and of course it, it goes back. That goes back a long way. That's a long way I think back. That was the first album or second album. Yeah, I believe so. 1975, I think it was. Yeah. How did you end up on on Motown? Well, I was pushing my song "Devil in the Bottle" to every major label, and I was in a major label's office in Nashville. And I was playing the song for them, hoping to get signed as an artist. And they turned me down. And as I walked out of the door of their offices, a guy said, "Uh, you got a minute? And I said, sure. He said, "Uh, would you come in my office, which was next door? And he said, I just heard you play a song to someone next door. I heard it through the wall, and I think it's a monster hit. Are Are you looking for a deal? And I said, yeah, I am. He said, well, Barry Gordy at Motown is starting Melody Land, which is going to be a country subsidiary of Motown. Why don't you be our first country artist? And lo and behold, I guess you'd say I was at the right place at the right time. And a lot of luck has to happen in an artist's career. And I was just lucky to be at the right spot at the right time. So that's really kind of how it happened. That's really cool. Well, being from Michigan, obviously, I love my Motown oh, yeah. music, you know. <laughs> I talk a lot about Michigan. Of course, Kid Rock is a very dear friend of ours, and we're at his house having dinner quite often. And he's uh, always talking about Motown. Of course, he's, you know, he, he's quite the rock star, li- literally a rock star. So, yeah. Uh, I've got, uh, I'm ca- kind of favor the state because of Barry Gordy and Motown. You bet. That's a good. That's a lot of good music coming out of our state. That's for sure. Oh, Kelly, I'm uh, your long battle with cancer, successful battle with cancer, and so many people that have been affected by cancer, and that you have been around and you have helped and continue to help, and you are a cancer survivor. This year, I will be celebrating my 20th anniversary, my 20 years ago. So if I can make it, and I'm a lightweight. Kelly is always saying that cancer to her was a blessing, and I'll go, what? And she'll say, yeah, because by having cancer, it prioritized my life. It let me realize what was important and what wasn't important in my life. And she says, I live life much larger now, and the sky is much bluer, and the grass is much greener, because I take the time now to live life and not just walk through it. And when you come close to losing your life, I guess that kind of comes around to you and makes you realize what's important. 
Well, you guys have got a lot of stuff coming up this summer. I know you mentioned a lot of great tour dates coming up, and uh, you said you're going to be finishing up your album. I hope you'll come back on the show when you get that done. I'd love to do a feature on it. Oh, we would just love that. We appreciate that very much. I've also got a really cool thing coming up, Scott. I'm hoping to be back on your show sooner than later because a very huge career highlight is coming for me in the next week or two. I can't talk about it now, but perhaps we'll be able to talk about it when we speak again. And it's, it's the biggest thing that's ever happened to me musically. I, I can't wait to share it with you. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Well, you know I'm here for you. That's great. I can't wait. Yeah. Well, thank you. I always, always look forward to talking with you, but it's just going to be um, something I didn't see coming, and I know you won't either. So I'm, I'm very, very thrilled to be able to, to share it. And I'm trying not to get too excited because I makes me nervous. I'll say something because I'm not good at keeping secrets, so this has been hard for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to it. You keep me posted, and we'll be happy to have you on anytime. You guys know that. I love having you on the air with me, and I, I appreciate Thanks. your time and your and your friendship, and we look forward to seeing you. We're going to be down in Nashville in October, so hopefully we'll get a chance to see you then. Oh, yeah, you oh. will. I'd love that. Definitely. Well, let's, let's just make plans to have some lunch or dinner or something, okay? That sounds fabulous. I'll get in touch with you when we get closer to the time, and we'll figure something out yeah. for sure. All right. Definitely. For sure. Well, KellyLang.net and TGShepherd.com are the websites, and we're going to play the brand-new duet single, Addicted to You, for you right now as we continue with My Kind of Country. TG and Kelly, thank you so very much for taking time to be on the show. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. It's our uh, we Thank we you. always enjoy visiting with you. Hope to do it again soon. Take care. Beer was never my thing. Whiskey was never my friend Wine I could take it or leave it But sometimes I like a good gin But I'm addicted to you, girl I'm addicted to you Cigarettes, I laid them down Wasn't that hard at all But if I had to live without your love I would die from the withdrawal Habits are easy to break But when it comes to your love, girl It's a drug that I cannot shake Cause I'm addicted to you, girl And I'm addicted to you Every time you
Look how far we come, my baby. We might have took the long way, but we knew we'd get there someday. They say, I bet they'll never make it. But just look at us holding on. We're still together, still going strong. But just look at us holding on We're still together, still going strong Look how far we've come, my baby. 